Hey YouTube, Sam back at you again. Um, happy Sunday. I hope y'all had a good weekend. Um, I just want to come on and um, I, I don't know. It's just something that's been um, um, it, it's just so sometimes when you go through some things, um, you have that light bulb effect, so to speak. Um, um, I'm a believer. I believe in the Most High. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm I'm never going to deny that. Um, and sometimes when you ask and you, you you pray for something and you ask, you know, the Most High to reveal something to you, um, when when it's revealed to you, it, it's almost it's, it's shocking, but it's not shocking. And it's like you know what? Wow, I knew it, but I guess I needed proof. Um, another thing is um, also um, I'm going through, um, uh, well, I'm not going through anything. I am pursuing a different career um, in my life right now. Um, I have nothing holding me back. Um, my daughter is grown with a child of her own and she's, and she's living her life. I mean, I'm sorry, they're living their life. Um, I don't owe anyone any explanation on anything. Um, I'm a single woman and I have nothing, you know, that's, that can stop me, but me. And I've been in this apartment for almost five years. It'll be, um, I'm sorry. I know it's four years. Um, it will be going on five years um, as of um, this year, um, this upcoming year. But I have been wanting to downsize my apartment for a, um, for the last two years. And for whatever reason, you know, either, you know, um, I couldn't get out of my lease while I was in the middle of the lease unless someone requested this size apartment. Or when I did ask about it, excuse me, um, they had just gave the apartment to someone else, and I'm like, I mean, and I mean, I've asked two, three times, you know, about downsizing, I said, I'll even take a one bedroom, which that would have been perfect for me, it's just me, and I've been wanting to downsize really for the last two years, and um, sometimes when you, when you go through some things, and sometimes you know, God move things in your on move things in your favor when you might think it's bad, but if you really step outside of it and take a look at it, it's like, wait a minute, this is gonna benefit me. So let me take advantage of what's put before me because I may not like it. I even may be a little bit uncomfortable, but at this point right now. I know in my heart something good is about to happen because I'm feeling uncomfortable. Um, I'm really not liking it. Um, I, and, and, and I'm and, and in my mind, I'm like, you can do this. But then I'm like, okay, if you do this, you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen later on. You, you already see what's going to happen. So why would you put, continue to put yourself in a situation that you don't need to be in? So, going forward, I'm like, yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm in the process of moving. I am really downsizing, and um, this is about to be something so good that's about to happen. That I mean, I, I right now I'm I'm I can't even explain it. And as I'm, you know, packing stuff up, and 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 I am, um. As I'm packing stuff up, I am really making a clean break. Um, what I mean by clean break, I may take a few items for my wall. Um, pots and pans. I might take a couple of pans. I might take a couple of pots. Um, you know, my my favorite uh, frying I, 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 my cast iron pans. I'm I'm telling you, I'm just gonna take them. I'm I'm just gonna say. I mean, I don't season them damn things up, but I'm making a clean break. I'm not taking any furniture, unless where I'm going. Well, yeah, I probably will need to take my bed. 
but my bed and my clothes. That's it. Any other furniture, I'm not taking because I don't have a need to take all of that anymore. It's stuff. It's just freaking stuff. And some people cannot survive without their stuff. I am at a point in my life, I'm like, it's just stuff. I mean, you can easily go and get that stuff replaced. It's just stuff. You're lingering, you're carrying, you, you're carrying all that load, that baggage, that shit. I'm not taking any of my TVs. I got a damn um, 65 inch screen right here. I'm not even taking that. I'm not taking that. I promise you, I'm not taking that. I, I will set that out there. However, one of the reasons why I'm not taking it, number one, is too big, and I'm not trying to rent a U-Haul to attach my car to it at all. No. Because if I take that, I'm not going to be able to put anything else in the car that's important to me that I feel that is going to be detrimental to me. That's number one. Number two, um, it needs a LDP, DLP, whatever it needs. Anyway, it has little white spots and dots and stuff on it. So I wouldn't even give it to nobody because when I put it out there next to the garbage thing, which probably is going to be um, this week, uh, because I, and the reason why I'm going to do it because I have another TV that's in there that's a roll, it's an old projection screen TV, but let me tell you something, that shit got the best damn picture I've ever seen. I'm not saying it's HD like that, but it is close to HD as you're going to get. It is it, it, it rolls on wheels, that's how old it is. But I'm going to tell you, that's been a standby TV since I got it. And I'm going to tell you, that TV has never let me down, knock on wood. Um, I put my furniture on OfferUp. I haven't put it on Craigslist. Um, not that um, I, you know, I just didn't. Um, I'm not taking anything. And I, I'm saying all of that to say that sometimes in your life, when it's time to roll out, you can it's, it's only important for you to take what you can carry in your two hands or your two arms. If you have to get someone to help you carry it to your car, you don't need to carry it. Man, let me tell you something. It's just fucking stuff. You can always get another TV. You can always get another bed. You can always get another couch or living room set. You can always get another microwave. You can always get another damn um, computer desk. You can, That is just stuff, man. At the end of the day, this shit is not even important in regards to how you function on a day-to-day -day basis. You need clothes to put on your back. Ain't nobody, I, ain't nobody trying to see me naked walking around out here. And I ain't got time to be going to jail for being in, in decent exposure. Hell, right now, I'm not, the way the way I want my body to be is not there. So I wouldn't even um, walk around in a two-piece bathing suit right now. Not saying that I'm like 300 pounds, no. No, I'm, no, I'm not saying that at all. Am I like, no, but I'm not, no, I'm, I'm very self-conscious, so no. But anyway, um, and no disrespect to any any person that's a certain weight size. I'm not saying that that's bad or anything like that. I'm not saying because you're that size that you're unhealthy. No, people that are that size can be very damn healthy. I, I know that for a fact. Um, but anyway, um, I'm only speaking for me. Um, but you have to make a clean break. And sometimes you have to make a clean break from relationships too. Um, it is what it is. Um, you know... It, I put it like this. Your mind is telling you you know that what you're doing or or what is going on or a situation that's going on, that shit is is toxic or it's just not right and it don't sit well in your spirit. When that thing don't sit right in your spirit, you gotta roll out with it. Now, your mind could tell you one thing. Like, I know this is a bad move, but your heart is like but I got to give it a chance. Let me tell you something. When you've been dealing with something or someone for an extended period of time and the situation has not changed, it hasn't gotten better, it really hasn't gotten any worse, 
but it damn sure has been a little bit uncomfortable. It's time to you talk about it. Now you talk about it and nothing has changed, then yeah, so you gotta break you you have to break away. It's hard to fucking break away sometimes, especially from people. The affairs of the heart is a motherfucker. Y'all gotta excuse my French, excuse my language, but I'm gonna keep it real. I'm I'm just gonna be honest. The affairs of the heart. When people start pulling at them, tugging at them heartstrings, man, your mind is just like, your mind can't even think. You have to be like, wait a minute, no. Reason, logic, I gotta be on the, I gotta be on the side of right with this. Reason, logic, being on the side of right. Sometimes you have to cut something or someone off, especially when you know that it ain't right. It don't have to be bad in order for it not to be right. It's just, it's not right. It don't have to be like, oh, he done went out here and slept with 35 women and the made six babies outside the house and, you know, and, and oh, it, it ain't got to be none of that. It ain't got to be where she out here tricking or, or she out here twerking out at the club, at the bar. It ain't got to be none of that. It ain't got to be no type of infidelity. It's just that when you have that spirit, that this man, that spirit of discernment is just like, no, I got to be on the side of right. This ain't working. You know, maybe we can be friends later on. Um, maybe in the next lifetime it might work out. But right now in this lifetime, it's, it's not working. And not that I don't care about you. Not even that I don't love you. It's not even that I wish you any ill will. I don't. It's just that I cannot move forward with you in my life. And sometimes when you're going through life, you cannot, let me repeat, and let me say this again, because some people will never understand this. You cannot take everybody with you on every journey and every path you take. Sometimes you on that path, and yeah, y'all might be on that same path, but you might have to go left. I know it's to y'all right, but it's my left. And sometimes you might have to go right which is y'all left my right. And then sometimes you have to go straight. But one thing you cannot do is make a U-turn and go back. You cannot make a U-turn and go back, even especially when it comes to relationships that you know was not right from the, from the beginning. Once you have, you come to a fork in the road, this is your fork. Like that song, The Spinners, um, I'll be around. This is my fork in the road. Oh, Y'all know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Anyway, um, you got your left. Okay. Here, here we go. You got your left, your right, your straight. Then you can go back. If you have been, if you have come down this road of shit, this is the road. I mean, I'm sorry for using my my arm, but but this is the only way I can get maybe get y'all to understand my picture. You've come down this road. You've gone through the hills, the valleys. You jumped over the hurdles. You done crawled under. You done been down in the down nasty, and you done came to this fork in the road. To where it's almost like you done hit a brick wall. Now. You can go straight and get your life right. You can go left, get your life right, and do something completely different with your life. You can go right, change your life, and do something different with your life. But whatever decision you make, whatever you do, you cannot make a U-turn and go back. Because if you think you caught hell coming down, getting out of that shit, it's going to be worse when you go back through it because it's going to be just as stank. And just as the, don't ever make a U-turn in your life. Whatever decision you make in your life, once you make that decision, you can't go back from it. I'm just sorry. Now, unless you're driving and you said, damn, I made a wrong turn. Then that you can make a U-turn and you can do whatever. Unless you got a fucked up GPS um, system. Um, and I'm not going to call no no name, point no fingers or elbows, no shit like that at this particular um, company who GPS, using GPS is their business. But I digress. Moving on. You cannot 
allow yourself to go back. When you see something or you see someone just keep doing the same song and dance, just keep running circles with the same song and dance, keep playing the same song, let me tell you something. Not only does the song get old, but the dance get old. It's just like, damn, can we do something else? No, nah, we can't do nothing else. Well, you go ahead. Um, you keep running that circle. I'll sit back and watch you. I want to see how long you keep doing the song and dance. But see, you get to the point, you just get tired of watching them do the song or dance. It's just like, you know what? I'm walking out of this. I'm out. You keep doing what you're doing, and I'm out. And when you open up that door, <clears throat> which is your eyes, and I'm sorry, I sat back on y'all, but I just got in deep thoughts. But when you open up that door, which is your eyes, and you really take the blinders off and you see what's around you, you, you have to ask yourself, wow, all of this was out here? But you didn't see it because that person had them blinders on you. Them blinders is off. It's like, why would I go back to that? They had the blinders put back on. But this time, not only going to put the blinders on, he going to put like this so I can only see what's right underneath my eye. Or really what's right in front. No. You can, be, you can sabotage your own shit. I have learned that, and I'm going to tell you right now, yes, have I done it before? Yes, I have sabotaged my own shit. Um, and it wasn't, wasn't intentional, but it was just something with my spirit wasn't right, and I was just like, maybe I'm reading more into it. And I think that's what, I, well, actually, that's what ended up happening. I ended up reading more into it, but that's because the communication was so damn jacked up that it was just where as well... That's not what you said. That's not what you did. That's not how you handle it. That's not what was done. So by you by your by you showing me your actions, how was I supposed to understand what you were doing when you wasn't communicating, you were just acting? No. I talk. I communicate. I'm old school. Um, you're gonna get on the phone and you're gonna talk to me. You're not gonna text me a damn whole conversation. For an hour, when we when we could have got on the phone and talked about this shit in 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, and been done with it. Instead of texting for a whole two hours. That's crazy. I don't understand that. I don't understand how people can argue through a text or argue on Facebook or argue on YouTube or argue on, on, on Instagram and Twitter. Who the hell argues by texting? That's some bullshit punk crap. Talk. Face to face, man to man, woman to woman, woman to man, whatever. People just don't, man, let me tell you something. Don't ever allow yourself to give up who you are or your dream for someone who does not appreciate it, who does not take you serious. Because you're going to look back, it's like, damn, you, once again, you have warning signs. Just like when your check engine lights come on. If your check engine light come on, what's the first thing you're going to do? Oh, shit. Oh, no. Nah. Let me take this down here to get somebody tested. And I ain't talking about taking it to advance all the part and have them little handheld testers. They're going to only tell you the basic shit. No, I'm talking about taking it to the dealership. See, and make sure your warranty will cover it. If your warranty will cover it, have them to run a diagnostic on your car. See what's going on. It could be just a loose hose. It could be a hole in the hose that could easily be replaced. Um, it could be something small. But if you keep riding your car or your vehicle, you keep riding it with the damn check engine light on for a month, two months, three months, oh, it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. You ain't bothered about going to get in the check. You ain't bothered about going to get it reset to, after it's been fixed. None of that. Trust me, if you fall, if your car fall dead on damn 95 in the middle of rush hour, it's nobody's fault but yours. Why? This thing that I've been dealing with in regards to me fighting it or moving, I have been fighting it for a year and a half. Um, but I came to the conclusion, I said, you know what, I'm not fighting it anymore. What I'm doing right now, I'm I'm really looking at from the end of this year, I'm I'm really looking at this thing now probably from six months to a year out from now on where I want to be. And me downsizing right now can actually put me there. It can literally put me there. I already know. I've already, you know, have, have figured it out. I've already have done this. So 
And the crazy part about it, and it's not that I don't want my family to know, it's just that I don't tell my family everything because sometimes they can put their fear on you in regards to what they think you should be doing or what they think is best for you. At some point in your life, you have to say, you know what, I love you guys. But at, but at the end of the day, it's not your decision to make. It is a decision for me to make. And we all love our family, but sometimes you have to tell your family, step back and let me handle it. I, I understand what you're saying, and I appreciate your concern. And I love the fact that you are concerned and you are passionate about how you feel about what, what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, who is going to be paying my bills? Church mouse pissing on cotton. You can hear that. Because nobody's going to say, well, I'll help you pay your rent or your light bill or your gas bill. You hear nothing. Not even crickets. When you say, well, who's going to help me pay my bills? You will get nothing. Then, once, see, once you throw money in it, then reality sets in. If you think I'm lying, you ask any family member and you tell them you're moving. Well, where you move to? I'm moving over here. Why are you moving over there? Because it's cheaper. Yeah, but you be right here, whatever. Okay, so are you going to help me pay my rent? Well, no. Okay, so you understand now? Yeah, I do. I mean, I don't like it. Okay, but unless you're going to help me pay my rent, then I'll stay right where I'm at. And then, like I said, you throw money on the shit, you throw money on the fire. Trust me, they mad because it's like, oh, shit, you burning up my money. But anyway, that's all I got. But like I said, sometimes you're going to go through some of uh, so if w When you're about to come into your shit, you're going to go through something that's so that's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. It's going to be different. And you're going to have to deal with it. And you're going to have to go through it. Because when you finish going through it, I promise you. Let me tell you something. This thing is in me so bad right now that I know that once I make this move, and I downsized to a smaller place. I know for a fact that what I'm about to do is about to hit. I'm about to hit the ground running. I'm telling you, I can um, I can pretty much see myself at a place right now on what I'm going to be doing. I'm telling you, I actually see myself there. It's a point of me getting there and the steps I got to go through to get there. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. So right now, it ain't up to me. It's up to the Most High and the Holy Spirit to rain down and, and protect me and be a fence around me. And when I make this move, I'm telling you, I'm making this move. It's about to be on and popping. Sometimes when you let shit go, you'd be surprised at the weight. It's like, damn, I lost 200 and 220 pounds in one day. It's like, how you do that shit? When you cut somebody or cut something off. That was holding you back because you put some energy and faith into something or someone that was not, I don't, I'm not going to say beneficial, but you put your time and your energy into something that was never going to go anywhere. It, so... I just couldn't do it anymore. And sometimes when you have to cut loose, you have to cut loose. Does it hurt your heart? Hell yeah. It hurts your heart. It breaks your heart. It does all of that. It does all of that. But at the same time, that peace of mind is, is, is more important than stuff and dealing with things and people that really just take you for granted and that are just very selfish. Um, and at the end of the day, it's your life, and can't nobody live it but you. So that's all I got, and I hope I didn't hold y'all too long, but all I say is love you first. Love you like you ain't never been loved your life. You love you like you in love with you and that and how you want to take care of you because when you meet that person that, that you're supposed to be with, trust me, they're going to know how to take care of you because they see how you're taking care of yourself. I'm out.